Claire, a nurse and mother, used to be, like everybody else, averagely bad at remembering details and faces. Then in 2004, the brain infection drastically affected her ability to remember almost anything. I have a large part of my life which I've just lost from the age of sort of 18, 20 to up to my illness in my mid 40s. A life when, you know, I met my husband, I've had my children and, uh, you know, a busy working life. And I've lost all the memory of that time completely. The brain damage caused by Claire's encephalitis means she also has a real problem recognizing faces. I don't know my family. I don't know my friends. I don't know my mum, my dad, my sisters, you know. Um, and it's very difficult to live with. Claire's condition is an extreme example of the eyewitness problem. But a remarkable technology that she is using could help us all with memory recall. Professor Martin Conway is a world authority on memory. He's been studying Claire for the past 18 months and has discovered that under certain circumstances, she can remember. How are you? Good to see you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks to you. Press the left button. I remembered that, you see? <laughs> Very good. There we go. Claire is viewing photographs from a device called a sense cam, which she wears around her neck. Here I am arriving at the house, unlocking the door. Do the sense cam records an image whenever one of its sensors are triggered by changes in light, temperature or motion. Getting some water ready for the flowers. Today, Claire is watching sense cam images from when her in-laws moved house nine months ago. What am I doing? Going off somewhere. The theory is, because SenseCam takes pictures in an automated fragmentary way, and because the records are visual, and from the user's perspective, the images mirror and trigger our own personal memories in a way that ordinary photographs cannot. And if Claire's experience is anything to go by... And now that is Judy. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's Judy. It looks like the theory might be right. Oh, I know, I remember now exactly what I did first, and that was... Put, get the flower. I'd taken a bunch of flowers so that mm. when they arrived they had a nice bunch of flowers in their new house. It's helped me see the whole thing again. Mm. Feel like I'm doing it and mm. part of it. Mm. There they are. Game the images on. Claire looks at could be having a profound effect on her damaged brain. There are signs that using the sense cam is helping to retrieve Claire's lost memories. And I was walking towards the bus station, so I wasn't, there wasn't a set meeting place. I didn't know what Faye was wearing or anything. And I recognised her. It was just, it took my whole breath away. There she was. I knew it was her, and it was just the most incredible feeling. My sister, Faye. Oh. If SenseCam can retrieve memories from those with neurological damage, can it help with the problem of eyewitness recollections? In a world first, Professor Conway will be investigating what effect, if any, the technology will have on our witnesses' recall of the first crime they saw. When they witnessed the pub fight, two of our volunteers, Chrissy and Graham, were wearing SenseCams. As they experienced every aspect of being at the pub, the sense cam was also taking snapshots from their point of view. Now a month later, they've traveled to the York Neuroimaging Center, where Professor Martin Conway will show them their sense cam images to see if they stimulate their recall of the crime. Taken by my um, by your sense, by my sense cam. It's very exciting indeed. This is the first time that anyone's ever sense cammed a crime and then done a neuroimaging study of it. So it's a one off. Having seen their sense cam images, 
Will Chrissy and Graham now remember the event in more detail? I guess. I just remember it was really weird that the policeman was saying, um, what was the food like? An MRI scan will reveal the level of brain activity. What we're hoping to find is that the patterns of activation for the pub event are much more intense and much more extensive towards the back of the brain, where we believe uh, visual episodic memories are stored. Nice and still. Here we go. As a control, Martin first established how our volunteers' brains normally behave when accessing memories. They were first asked to remember emotional moments from their lives. So I should call you a moment when she was happy. OK, this next task will be uh, negative events. Then they were asked to recall specific moments on that fateful day. She's now been asked to remember travelling on the bus to the pub. Remembering being the, the people in the bar having a row, and she's recalling a memory of that. Chris's brain scan revealed extraordinary results. When Chrissy recalls memories, the active parts of her brain show up in red and yellow. The more colour means the more vivid are her memories. Like in this image, where she has been asked to remember negative events in her life. But when compared with Chris's recollection of the pub event, the big concentrated areas of red and yellow shows that SenseCam is helping her remember events in much more vivid detail. This is much clearer for the event that she's made a SenseCam of than for any of the other tasks she's done so far, which is what we hoped would happen. Uh, and it's certainly happening with her, isn't it? Graham's brain activity exceeded all Martin's expectations. Well, look at this, uh, huge areas of activation in the posterior part of the brain. Probably what's happening with Graham at the moment is he's having intensely vivid and detailed memories of small scenes to do with the pub experience. <laughs> and that's reflected in these huge patterns of activation here. These are the sorts of activations you might see if you're actually visually looking at something. If I hadn't seen those pictures, I would have been doing just more of a sort of broad overview of it all, but I was sort of recalling little tiny details. The MRI shows that triggering memories with sense cam images had a profound effect on how vividly details of the crime were remembered. Originally developed as a personal black box, its future use could not only aid those with memory loss, but according to Professor Conway, could help witnesses with a contextual reinstatement in criminal investigations. The future, really, of witnesses generally is going to involve things like this. Uh, visual records they might have made at the time, even though they didn't know they were going to witness a crime, followed later by brain scans which establish, uh, to some extent, the truth of what they're saying. <laughs>